On day one, I spawned in and ate my way out of a giant pumpkin as a fat dragon with 10 hearts. It looks like I'm way chunkier than the average dragon. It's okay though, because it's what's on the inside that counts. But my thoughts were interrupted by a huge fireball hitting the ground next to me. I managed to dodge it just in time and looked up to see a huge fire dragon floating in the sky above me. Sup, Tubby? What are you doing on my turf? You know this is Chad's place. Who? Chad's the best. Hey, don't call me mean names. And who's this Chad guy? I'm Chad, and I rule. And when I'm flying around here, taking selfies for my red hot fire dragon Insta, I don't want your goofy butt sitting in my background, killing my vibe. But, but, you can't just call me names and kick me out. Uh, yeah I can. I'm Chad the fire dragon. I'm number one. You aren't the first loser I've chased out of here, and you won't be the last, baby. It's fire time. Chad the fire dragon blasted another fireball at me. I dodged again in the nick of time and flapped my wings, flying off into the air and escaping Chad's fire. Yeah, that's right. You better run. Nobody messes with Chad. <sighs> when I'd escaped Chad, I landed for a bit to breathe and calm myself down. That guy was a major jerk. Why would you be mean to someone just because of what they look like? He must be evil. My thoughts were interrupted by a big angry dread beast who thought I looked like a filling snack. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. All I could do was fly off before the dread beast pounced at me. This world doesn't seem too kind. I need to make things better around here before everyone hates on each other. On day two, I landed somewhere that looked a little safer. At least here, nobody would start attacking me for no reason. I need a roof over my head before I can do anything else. Maybe it's time to build myself a fat dragon base. I used some of my natural dragon strength to break down a few trees. It wasn't long before I had enough wood to make myself a wooden pickaxe and a crafting table. Then I used my wooden pickaxe to dig up some stone and create a stone sword and a stone pickaxe. This is exactly what I need to build a base. But first, I need to get myself a sweet treat. I've had a hard couple of days. I've earned it. I flew off to a nearby area and found a delicious looking cake just laying around. The perfect treat. But then, a dread ghoul jumped out of the shadows and started laughing. <laughs> My fiendish plan worked. I knew that a cake would attract a perfect fat little victim, and I was right. Oh, come on. Why is everyone here so judgmental? It's the way of the world, fat dragon. And now you've fallen for my trap. You're all mine. But before the dread ghoul could pounce, I flew away again, all the way back to my base to enjoy my cake. Wait, I got so distracted by the cake that I didn't even start my base. When I landed, I used my stone pickaxe and collected more resources and started building myself a basic base. At least it would give me somewhere to stay at the end of the day. Mm, I should work on a kitchen next. On day three, I decided that I needed to make my base a little bigger. I wasn't the tiniest dragon out there after all, and I needed the base to be roomy to be comfortable in it. So I flew off to a new location to collect more resources. Of course, it wasn't going to be as easy as I'd hoped, because nothing seems to be easy around here. The second I landed, there was an angry looking dread knight waiting for me. Vest, thou art the hefty dragon forsooth. Alec, tis a battle. A battle, good sir. I literally don't understand anything you're saying, but I still feel like you're being mean to me. Thou art correct. Battle me, knave. I was really upset about being called mean names again. Probably. So this time, I was ready to engage in battle. I attacked him with my stone sword until the dread knight gave up and moved away. Thou doth won this time, dragon. But next time, I will have my revenge. Forsooth. Stop saying forsooth. It doesn't make you sound cool or smart. It's just weird. With that, the dread knight ran away. Moments later, a different figure emerged. A big black hippogriff. Oh no. Are you going to say mean things about my weight too? What? Heavens no. I'd never dream of judging someone based on their appearance. That's a total Chad the Dragon move. I'm Buck. Buck the Hippogriff. Wait, Chad the Dragon? You know that guy? Huh, I wish I didn't. He's so conceited. If he was made of cake, he'd probably eat himself. Talk about a selfish meanie. Oh, speaking of cake, I have some back in my base. Come join me. We can share it together. I'm Zozo, by the way. Finally, someone kind around here. You seem hungry already. I'll let you have some of my fish. And let's go, Zozo. I'd made my first friend, and we started back to my base. Things were finally looking up for me. From day four to day five, I returned to my base with Buck the Hippogriff. 
It felt nice to have someone who was so kind in a world that had been so mean to me. Let's build you a room, Buck. Something that really suits your awesome personality. You're too kind, Zozo. You were kind to me first. This is just me getting even. I started expanding my base, creating a nice new room for Buck to stay in. I even made it with an open roof so he could fly out and explore anytime he wanted. This is an awesome room, Zozo. I'm so happy that I met you. You're the coolest fat dragon I've ever seen. You're doing a lot to help boost my confidence, Buck. I love it. But our wholesome friendship moment was interrupted by a bunch of death worms slithering out of the ground towards me. Oh no, I need to do something about this before it ruins my whole base. I ran in and started battling the death worms. Lucky for me, in the battle of worms versus dragons, dragons normally win, and this was no exception. And once the worms were defeated, they dropped some delicious apples onto the ground. Huh, apples and worms, it doesn't normally go that way around. I stashed the apples into my inventory and went back to my base where Buck the Hippogriff and I could hang out. With the death worms taken care of, I could work on expanding and improving my base. Yes. First, I need to make sure I have a fixed source of food, breakfast especially. I'd love some eggs. That's why I built a coop and some fences, then collected a few chickens and let them live inside. Free range, of course, because that's the kindest way to do it. It'll make the eggs taste better too. But while I was out searching for more chickens to add to my teeny tiny chicken farm, I saw the last thing I ever wanted to see, Chad the Fire Dragon. He was flying right above me, looking just as mean and arrogant as ever. Ugh, what are you doing here, chubby? Didn't the Chadmeister tell you that you need to get off the overworld? Maybe go to the nether. That's where all the other weird, ugly beasts hang out. <laughs> nice one, Chad. You can't nice one your own joke, Chad. It doesn't work like that. Chad can do anything that Chad likes. He's the best. I mean, I'm the best. Whatever. Look at what I can do. Suddenly, Chad started growing even bigger and stronger than before. He made even his old self look small. Oh no, you're so huge. How? I've been getting some extra reps in at the gym. It's making me real swole. You'd know this if you followed my fire insta. Like I said, instead, you're gonna deal with my fire. Fire! Chad blasted an even bigger fireball at me. There was no way I could fight him like this. I needed to just get out of here. I flew off as fast as I could, just hoping that Chad wouldn't follow me. Getting rid of him was going to be a lot harder than I thought. From day nine to day 10, I sat in my room at my base, feeling terrible about all the things Chad said to me and how much stronger he was than me. How can I ever expect to stop him from being so horrible to everyone if I can't even stop him from being horrible to me? Buck the Hippogriff seemed to sense that I was upset and came in to comfort me. Zozo, I'm so sorry about all those terrible things that Chad said to you. For what it's worth, he's only like that because deep down, he's so insecure about himself. He wishes he had the kind of confidence you have. Those are kind words, Buck, and they do make me feel a little better. I just feel bad that I wasn't able to defeat him. Maybe what you need is a little inspiration. Go look out into the yard and see a little something I've been working on for you. I ran outside and saw that Buck had been working on a statue. It looked incredible, but it was early enough that I couldn't quite tell what it was yet. Wow, this is amazing. What do you think it's gonna be when it's done? Let me know down in the comments. Buck came up to me again. Amazing work, Buck. I love the statue. What's it going to be? I couldn't give that away. And besides, there's something else you should see. I built you a base upgrade. I looked back at my base and saw that Buck had built me a storage room. The perfect place to store all of our weapons and supplies. Buck, you're the best friend I've ever had. From day 11 to day 12, I decided it was time to rest and recover from the stressful last few days. After all, it's important to take care of yourself and take time off now and then. But while I was sleeping, I started having the strangest dreams. I dreamed of how Chad the Fire Dragon was first created. He crawled out of lava, deep underground, a dragon of pure fire. Whoa, I'm a dragon of pure fire. This is crazy. I think I'm gonna call myself Chad. Yeah, that feels like a good name for me. But everyone was afraid of Chad because he was so big and so dangerous because of his fire powers. Chad felt bad about everyone being afraid of him, so to cover up how bad he felt, he decided to pretend he was confident in a completely over-the-top way. The Chadster's number one! Ugh. But because Chad's confidence wasn't real, he could only protect it one way, by being mean to others, putting them down to make himself feel better. Everyone is dumb and ugly except me. <laughs> oh yeah, Chad is awesome, and I'm Chad, baby. 
Chad developed such a reputation for being rude and mean, nobody would tell him to stop. And as the years went on, he only got more powerful. Needless to say, it was a really weird dream, but I definitely felt like I knew more about Chad afterwards. I just wish I knew how I could use it against him. From day 13 to day 15, I decided I needed to settle a few old scores to improve my confidence. This fat dragon was through with running away. That's why I flew back to where it all started, to face the dread beast that thought I was an easy snack. Now I was going to show him that fighting me was going to be anything but easy. I landed right next to the dread beast, ready to battle, with the stone sword at the ready. Let's go, dread beast. We'll see who's really feeling the dread when I'm done. The dread beast ran at me, but I didn't budge. I fought back. And this time, I won! And with the XP I got from winning, I leveled up into a bigger, tougher, fatter dragon! Chad is gonna think twice about messing with me now! I've got an entire 30 hearts and a brand new weapon, Dragon Claws! I took to the skies, happier than I'd felt in a long time! From day 16 to day 19, feeling encouraged by all my progress lately, I decided it was time to treat myself to a gear upgrade. I found a nearby mine and went underground, digging until I found some iron ore. Perfect, this is exactly what I needed. But I wasn't alone in the mine because the perfect opposite of a fat dragon was down there waiting for me, a bunch of human skeletons. At least they don't have enough tongue to make any mean jokes about me. I defeated the skeletons, then used my iron ore to smelt and craft an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Looks like my fighting and mining skills have just leveled up. Chad is gonna feel so jealous about this when he finds out. With all my new gear, I went back to my base, feeling better than ever. From day 20 to day 22, I was rudely awakened by Buck storming into the room. Zozo, Zozo, you need to wake up right now. Something terrible is happening. Terrible? Oh no, that doesn't sound good. Quite the opposite, actually. It's terrible. Chad, the fire dragon is waiting for you outside. I think he wants to fight. I got up and ran outside as quickly as I could. And just like Buck had told me, Chad the fire dragon was waiting. Hey, Jabroni, it's the Chadmeister, Chad Geddon, the Central African nation of Chad. And as usual, I'm happy to hand you a big steaming plate of humiliation, baby. You may be a fire dragon, Chad, but I think you're just full of hot air. Are you really saying all this stuff about yourself because you believe it or because you want to believe it? Ooh, look at you, Mr. Big Tubby Head Shrinker. You think you understand the Chadster's brain? The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. You could never even hope to understand what I'm about, and I'm actually super duper confident. You're just way too much of a loser to get that. Sounds like you're not that sure of yourself. I so am! Let's fight, doofus! We charged at each other and began battling. He blew fire at me, but with my new strength since our last battle, I was able to take the heat. That's when I showed him my new claws, swiping at him again and again. He seemed so shocked that I was really fighting back that he broke away from the fight and started to fly off. I didn't really want to fight you that time anyway. Smell you later, fat dragon. It wasn't exactly a true victory, but I'd seen the first crack in Chad's confidence. Maybe I can beat him after all. From day 23 to day 26, I decided that I needed to treat myself to a new enchantment for all my hard work, surviving my first true fight with Chad. Given how much he'd helped me so far, I asked Buck what he thought I should do. Seeing as you got yourself an iron sword a while back, maybe you should apply the sharpness enchantment. Who knows, it might even make your claws more powerful. That's a great idea, Buck. You're always looking out for me. On Buck's suggestion, I crafted and applied the sharpness enchantment. All my weapons were a lot more effective after that. From day 27 to day 31, I got more good news from Buck. Zozo, come take a look. I've been doing some more work on the statue, and I think you're going to love it. Oh, that's so exciting. I can't wait to see. I ran out and took a look at the statue. It wasn't done yet, but it was coming along so well. Buck really had a gift for making statues. This looks amazing, Buck. I can't wait to see what it'll be when it's done. That's actually something I wanted to talk to you about, Zozo. The statue is coming along great, but it needs something else. Think you can go get some for me? No problem, Buck. I'll set off immediately. Buck told me what he needed and sent me off to the west. I headed out with my iron pickaxe ready to mine like my life depended on it. It didn't take me long to find the blocks that Buck needed, but there was a wither there waiting for me. Nothing is ever easy around here. I took a few wither skulls, but soon managed to use my claws to turn the tide of the battle. Once the wither was gone, I mined the blocks and went back to my base. Buck was waiting for me. Here, Buck, take these. Thanks, Zozo. This is exactly what I needed. 
From day 32 to day 35, I went out exploring again, wanting to increase my strength and confidence. If there were any quests for me to take, I'd be happy to take them. But my confidence was shaken a little by a huge creeper spider suddenly skittering towards me. This is not how I wanted to spend today. I ran away as the creeper spider exploded, taking out a bunch of blocks beneath it, but thankfully not me. Creepers are one of those problems that take care of themselves. While I was wandering around the explosion scarred area, I saw another strange creature, a rabbit wolf, hopping around and looking worried. Are you okay, Miss Rabbit Wolf? Well, the truth is, no, things are awful right now. Awful? Oh no, what happened? Is there any way I could help? My friend, the rabbit, was kidnapped by the Crimson Phantom. He's a local weirdo who thinks he's a super villain. And if we don't save the rabbit soon, who knows what will happen? We'll never have to find out. Wait here, I'm gonna go save your rabbit friend. And with that, I flew off, ready to become a hero. From day 36 to day 39, I arrived at the location where the wannabe supervillain, the Crimson Phantom, was holding the rabbit. He was every bit as weird as the wolf rabbit had told me. <laughs> it is I, the Crimson Phantom, the Lord of Darkness. I am the most powerful and the evil villain in the overworld, and nothing will stop me from taking control. I am number one. But isn't Chad the fire dragon number one? Oh no, Chad, is he here? No, no, he's not here. I was just talking figuratively. Phew, that's a relief. Almost lost my cool there. Hearing all of that gave me an idea. The Crimson Phantom may not be afraid of me, but he was definitely afraid of our mutual enemy, Chad the fire dragon. Maybe Chad can be useful for once. From day 40 to day 43, I flew out towards the Crimson Phantom and the captured rabbit, trying to look as intimidating as possible. Both of them turned to look at me as I approached. Be gone, fat dragon, for I am the Crimson Phantom, the vilest villain in all of the overworld, and this rabbit belongs to me. Fool, I work for his Chadness, Chad the Fire Dragon, and he is extremely displeased that you're out here tarnishing his rad name. Oh no, oh no, 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 please, please tell his Chadness I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause any offense. I'll do whatever he wants, I promise. You'll give up the rabbit and let her go. His Chadness requests your presence. Of course, I'll... Wait, fat dragon? Chad's been making fun of you on his dragon insta for weeks now. You're not with him. You're trying to trick me. Ah, you can't blame me for trying. With my plan foiled, I attacked the Crimson Phantom with my powerful claws. Despite all his bragging, he was one of the easiest enemies I'd ever defeated. You saved me. Thank you so much. I was worried I'd never get away from that awful villain. Don't thank me, Rabbit. You've got a friend who cares a lot about you. As if on cue, the Rabbit Wolf hopped in. Thank you for all you've done, Zozo. Here, take this potion of swiftness. It's the least I could do. You're a true hero. Oh, stop it. You're gonna make me cry. From day 44 to day 49, I gave more materials to Buck the Black Hippogriff so he could continue work on the statue. Great job, Zozo. You're really pulling your weight with this project. I'll take that as a compliment, considering how much my weight is. I mean it, buddy. You're a kind and reliable person. Anyone would be lucky to have you as a friend. Thanks, Buck. Now I feel like a million bucks. There's only one me, Zozo. Just like there's only one you. That's deep, but you knew what I meant. I let Buck continue working on the statue and realized that I was hungry. After all the quests I'd been doing, I had really worked up an appetite. It was time to add something to the base in order to help out with that. A proper kitchen. I'd craft a couple of cooking services and shelves to store ingredients. That way, I'd be able to make the most nutritious meals when I was in the mood for food. It's like they always say, never trust a skinny cook and always trust a fat dragon cook. Once I had completed the kitchen, I went back to see how Buck was doing on the statue. It was starting to look even more like what it was supposed to be. I couldn't wait to see how it would look when it was done. From day 50 to day 53, I was minding my own business at the base when Chad the fire dragon decided to rear his big overinflated head. Oh, hey, Chapster. Still your lame roly-poly self, I see. 
Lucky for you, the Chadmeister decided to take some time out of his busy Insta schedule to instigate a little one-on-one -on -one conflict. Leave me alone already, Chad. I'll fight if I have to, but I didn't wake up this morning choosing violence. Too bad, because Chad the Cool and Rad always chooses to dunk on losers. By the way, when I said one-on-one, -on -one, I meant one-on-several, because I've brought my fans with me. It was true. Chad had rolled up with a bunch of fire guardians who listened to everything he said. They must have been followers by nature. How is it fair to outnumber me, Chad? At least fight your own battles if you're gonna be a bully. Well, sorry. There's so much of you to go around that I thought I should bring more guys. Get up, boys. Chad's fire guardians tried to gang up on me, but I was a fighter now, so I shredded through them with my claws. I was so focused on the fight that I almost didn't see Chad and the other guardians kidnap Buck from the base. Zozo, win that fight and come save me. I know you can. Buck, how low does Chad want to go in order to ruin my life? I took down the rest of the attacking fire guardians like Buck said, and I felt my confidence rising. I grew larger and obtained 60 hearts. I could also breathe out a big blast of fire. Looks like Chad isn't the only one with fire around here. With that, I also set the front yard on fire. From day 54 to day 57, I spent some time putting out the fires left over from the attack on the base. They sure did set a big part of my base on fire, but it didn't bother me that much because I could easily extinguish it. Once I had extinguished the fire, I thought about the one thing I couldn't repair. I need to get Buck back. He always stuck up for me, so I want to do the same for him. I went to the desert to go visit Miss Rabbit Wolf. I knew a thing or two about friendship. And because I helped her rescue her friend not too long ago, she would probably help me rescue mine. I'm so sorry that Buck got taken away by Chad's henchmen. I know exactly how that feels. I want to do something about it, but I don't know where to begin. Why don't you try checking the selfies that Chad posts? There's got to be something in the background that could help you find out where he's taking Buck. That's a good idea. He posts pictures of where he is all the time. It should be easy to find his evil lair from that. You can turn his false confidence into a real weakness. Thanks, Rabbit Wolf. From day 58 to day 62, I went mining for diamonds so I could upgrade my tools. I'm a confident dragon, and I deserve to treat myself to nicer things. Of course, not everyone in the mine agreed with me on that point. There were a bunch of warped phantoms swarming around where I was trying to dig. I could use my fire breath to scatter them, but they'd always come back. This seems like more of a task for my claws. Can't a dragon mine in peace? Once I had cleared out all the warped phantoms, I was able to gather a good amount of diamonds from the cave. I crafted a diamond sword and a diamond pickaxe, both of which would come in handy when the time came for me to go rescue Buck from the clutches of Chad. From day 63 to day 66, I was looking at the unfinished statue and feeling sad that Buck couldn't be here. The two of us had been working together on the statue for a long time now, and seeing that it was unfinished was a reminder that without him, I'd never see what the statue could become. I thought about working on it myself, but that wouldn't do any good. Buck is counting on me to rescue him from Chad. I couldn't back down from facing that terrible bully. For now, the statue needs to wait. Hang on, Buck. I'm gonna find you, wherever you are. And if you want to find more of my awesome adventures, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you'll always be able to. From day 67 to day 70, I found a place that looked a lot like where Chad the Fire Dragon took many of his selfies. The Crimson Gardens were definitely red, like one might expect for a fire dragon, and there also seemed to be a huge lair designed to show off. That's gotta be Chad's pad. As I approached, I noticed that there were a bunch of fire guardians hanging around outside. My guess had to be correct, since those mobs would do anything for Chad's attention, including trying to keep me out of Chad's pad. I knew I was looking at a fight if I tried to get past them. Hey, you guys, is my friend inside there? The fire guardian said nothing and charged me all at once. I knew fire breath wouldn't do any good against creatures of pure fire, so I stuck to melee attacks. Thanks to my increased health, even fighting this many fire guardians wasn't much of a problem. It was true that I had gotten even bigger and stronger since my other fight with Chad's minions. I'm not just fat, I'm large and in charge. I was able to battle my way through the inside of Chad's pad. I just knew my friend was in here somewhere. From day 71 to day 74, I explored Chad's pad and fought off more of the fire guardians as I did. This base is gigantic. Chad must really enjoy having a lot of space that he doesn't need, all to himself. While I was sneaking around, I saw Chad. He must have been finished taking selfies in a nearby room. 
Oh yeah, Chad rules. The camera loves Chad, and so does everyone else. And Chad! He seemed to be really into his routine at the moment, and it felt awkward to interrupt him. I came here to rescue Buck, not to pick a fight, so I just let him continue bigging himself up. Of course, I couldn't help myself from sneaking some potions of healing from one of his pad's chests. He won't miss it, and besides, he's hurt me enough times that one little potion is the least of what he'd need to do to make up for it. From day 75 to day 78, I managed to find the dungeon where Chad had been keeping Buck. It was time for a good old fashioned prison break. Zozo, you made it. I always knew you had it in you, friend. Thanks, Buck. It was hard making it all the way here without your kind words, but I was still able to do it because I've got confidence in myself now. I used my fire breath to destroy the bars of the prison, setting Buck free. Nicely done. Now let's get out of here. Whoa, 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 who said you could leave? Chad didn't, and if Chad didn't, it doesn't matter who did. <laughs> Chad. Oh no, it was Chad. There was only one thing I could think of to make sure that Buck would be safe from this kidnapping bully jerk. Get out of here, Buck. I'll catch up with you after Chad and I have a talk. With that, Buck ran off, leaving me alone to take on Chad. <laughs> like Chad would talk to you for any reason other than reminding you that you're totally stupid looking. Actually, I meant talk as in fight. Let's work things out like dragons with our claws and fire breath. Can't get enough of Chad's fire breath? Okay, you asked for it. Chad breathed his fire blast at me, but I returned with my own. He was surprised that I could do what he did, but that made sense because he always underestimated me. We started to fight with our claws, and even more than the previous time I was holding my own. I got several good hits in on him before he started to show a little bit of nervousness. What's the matter, Chad? Not able to pretend as well as you normally do? As if Chad needs to pretend. I'm the real deal, Lamo. Check this out. From day 79 to day 84, Chad flexed his dragon muscles and totally hulked out into a super beast of a dragon. Oh yeah, Chad was already the best, but now you can say hello to the even better super mega ultra deluxe Chadmeister Supreme. Yikes, I didn't expect he'd have another form. Chad totally could have beaten you in his regular form. Chad just didn't feel like it. Right, so he transformed for absolutely no reason at all. I'm really not sure I believe you, but I'm also really afraid of your new form. I ran away as fast as I could. Behind me, I could hear Chad laughing and calling me more mean names. We would see who would be laughing the next time we met, but this time it was definitely Chad who would be laughing. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to base and found that Buck had already made his way back there before me. I was really glad to see him home. The base had not felt the same without him. Did I miss anything, Zozo? I was gone for a long time at Chad's pad. That fire dragon was so annoying and talking about himself the whole time. I'm really glad to be back. I'm glad to hear it, Buck. Sorry you had to go through all that. It wasn't all bad. I did manage to swipe some relaxation supplies from Chad's relaxation room. I bet we could turn these into a room of our own. That sounds awesome. I love relaxation. I got to work on upgrading the base with a brand new relaxation room, while Buck chose to make up for lost time and work on the base's statue. I made sure to put all the right details into the relaxation room, including lots of couches for Buck and I to lounge around on. I bet both of us will really appreciate the work I've done on this room after Buck is done putting together that statue. When I was done with the relaxation room, I went to see the statue and found that it looked absolutely incredible. It was only a statue of me, but I never looked at myself so proudly before. Remember how you feel about yourself at this moment, Zozo. That confidence in who you are, recognizing your own best qualities, is the key to defeating Chad. I did almost have him last time, but he's got this new, super duper form now, and I think he's gonna knock me out the next time I see him. In that case, you just take what you already like about yourself and make it even more powerful. There's a spell you can cast that will bring your inner strength to the surface. Show him who you really are! From day 90 to day 94, I sought out the book of spells, which was said to contain a spell that would bring my inner strength to the surface. It was located inside of a deep cave that was full of wither spiders. There was a time not so long ago that I wouldn't have dared to fight for myself, especially against such powerful mobs. But if what Buck said about this spell was true, then I couldn't wait to get my inner strength on. I'm becoming more like who I want to be every single day, and there's nothing that some bully can say that would make me feel like I'm less than that. The wither spiders had powerful attacks and could shoot deadly wither skulls, but with my chubby body and huge amount of hearts, I could withstand equally huge amounts of damage. Big is beautiful. I 
burned the spiders away with my fire breath and found my way to the book of spells. This must be the right one. I'll read it when I get back home. From day 95 to day 97, I was back at base, preparing for my showdown with Chad. I was determined to use everything that I had in order to win this fight and overcome that bully once and for all. I knew that I'd be having the fight at his place, so instead of doing any sort of upgrades on my base, I focused on what I would need to do to fight at my best. Potions are the way to go. I can drink a lot of those at once to give myself an advantage. First up was a standard potion of strength to increase the damage of my claws attacks. Second, I chose a potion of regeneration so I could get even more use out of my high amount of hearts. And the third potion that I picked was a potion of fire resistance. Chad is always bragging about his fire, but this should take the heat off of me. On day 98, I decided to relax so that I wouldn't stress out too much about the impending fight I was going to have with Chad. I couldn't let him get into my head, so I made sure to fill my brain with fun and positive feelings. And if you want to feel fun and positive too, you should type ZOZO into the search bar so you can find more of my videos. Also, while it's just us relaxing, go ahead and leave a comment about what I should be next. On day 99, it was time to settle my score with Chad once and for all time. I walked through the Crimson Gardens and straight inside Chad's pad. That mean and nasty fire dragon himself was lying in wait, and he was still in his tricked out new form. Back for more, you little dragon tender? Chad is better than Chad has ever been. This new form is totally awesome and definitely better than anything you could do. I now understand why you decided to take that form, Chad. Cause I'm a beast like that? No, it's because you have something to prove. You may have scared everybody else, but I was able to rattle that fake confidence of yours. You're the one who has actually scared Chad. What? No, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Chad is the man, or the dragon man. Actually, I'm just a dragon. Yes, and I'm just a fat dragon who's got inner strength. I downed my potion and used the book of spells to cast the spell of power and unleash my inner strength. My heart rose to 100, and I now had a mighty tail slap attack. Ready to throw down, Chad. Chad is having second thoughts. I mean, now Chad's the best. Chad will take you out in any form, Tubbo. The fight began, and I whipped him with my new tail slap. He tried his fire breath, of course, but I was resistant. Your fire can't hurt me anymore, and neither can your words. I gave him serious claw strikes and even more tail slaps, then I unleashed my own fire breath. No way, you can't be fire. Chad is fire. Chad is fire as fire. Not anymore. Then I tail slapped Chad one more time, and he was done bothering me. On day 100, I was once again relaxing at the base with Buck the Black Hippogriff. Chad won't bother me or anyone again. I really taught him a lesson. You sure did stand up for yourself, Zozo. And you never let anyone tell you who you should be or how you should look. You said it, Buck. I'm the best at being me, and that's what counts more than anything else.